CataractCoach.com, robotic-assisted cataract surgery. The future of ocular surgery is with the help of robotics and AI. Now remember, these robots are going to assist you. They're not going to replace you. It's still you. It's just a better version of you. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the robot making an incision in a porcine eye, very clean and controlled. You can adjust the geometry, injecting viscoelastic, very smooth, very controlled, high degree of safety. Even here's nucleus removal, sculpting a groove in the nucleus or whatever technique you'd like. And the robot gets a tremendous amount of information, both video, 3D, and OCT, combines it all together. And here you go at the end of the case, injecting the eye wall in the capsule bag, smooth and controlled. Robotic surgery and ophthalmology has come a long way, and we're already actually using it, if you think about it. Look at keratorefractive surgery, like LASIK or lenticular extraction. This is already programmed into a femtosecond laser to make a lenticule or create a flap, and then an eczema laser that's going to track the eye at 500 times a second to give us an unprecedented level of accuracy. Now, you wouldn't want to go backwards to the days of radiokeratotomy, right? Now let's look at even cataract surgery. You can use a femtosecond laser to help you create a capsular rexis, which is more precise. You can chop up the nucleus into smaller pieces. So you're already using these assist devices now. But now we can incorporate other aspects of the surgery, making a keratome incision, nucleus removal, cortex cleanup, injecting the IOL. All the above can be done with the assistance of a robot. Now, remember, the robots are going to assist us, not replace us. You fly on airplanes now, and there's autopilot. But you still have a human pilot. But the autopilot makes the plane safer, and it gives you a wider margin of happiness to know that the airplane is going to be okay, even if there's human error, that can be detected. How can it help you? Well, first of all, what's the learning curve in ophthalmology? We talk about this all the time on Cataract Coach, right? If you look right over there, the learning curve for a human is tough. You learn in residency and you get pretty good. And then in your fellowship or your first few years of practice, you get better and better up that curve of learning and skill. And then you have a great career ahead of you. And at some point in the future, skills may plateau a little bit and then start to decline as you get older, then you retire. But look at the robot. With the help of AI, the robot can keep learning and keep getting better. There's really no stopping this. Now, think of the other aspects, too. What about how quick your reaction time is? You're doing surgery, and you see the capsule break, or the capsule comes too close to the probe. How can you react? Well, if you're like me and most surgeons, you're pretty good. And that's a 200 millisecond reaction time. But you say, no, 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 I'm better than that. I'm as good or better than an F1 race car driver with a 100 millisecond reaction time. Okay, fine. But the robot can be 10 times better than that. Look at the picture here. The reaction time for the robot is much better than that. What about precision? A human, you can have about 40 microns of control, and that's even with us pivoting in the incisions to use that to our advantage. A robot can be, again, many times better, even an order of magnitude better. If you have a little bit of a tremor, it can get rid of that. Think about this. When you watch a video, you're watching me right now. It's not fluid. You're watching 25 or 30 frames a second. But to our human minds, it looks fluid. So the most we can take in in terms of data through our eyes is about 25 or 30 frames a second. Well, the robot can do two 3D cameras, 4K cameras at a 100 frames, 500 frames, 1,000 frames a second. And it can combine that in real time with swept source OCT. Combine the two to get incredible data. And so at all times, when operating, to know exactly where the posterior capsule is. So it offers us something more advanced than we have now. Now remember, the robots can be used for telesurgery, meaning the surgeon's in one room and the robot's in another, whether that room is 10 meters away or 10 kilometers away. It can be used to assist, so I can give me a higher level of control or precision as I'm operating. But it also can help do automated Again, like you're doing now with LASIK, where the machines, the lasers are automating a large portion of the procedure. Finally, it can actually give you increased throughput. I can supervise four robots at once on a screen and say, looking good, looking good. Uh, this one, pause this robot, let the others finish, and then I can take over. So I think you'll really be amazed by this technology. Let me show you some more videos here.
Here's the robot in action. Two articulating arms with some larger joints like your shoulder or your elbow, but also fine motor control like your wrist or even better, your fingertips. The robot comes over here and is going to dock and get a new instrument, all sterile. This cassette can be easily sterilized and now brought over to the eye with the two articulating arms to perform the procedure. Now, if you look at this video, on the right is the 3D reconstruction using the video data plus web source OCT. So at all times, you know where the probe is and more importantly, where's the posterior capsule. And this can be monitored with an incredible degree of precision and reaction time. So nucleus removal goes very smoothly. Again, we've been working on this for many years. Here's an incision. Now you say, well, I don't want a uniplane. I want a three plane. Easy to do. No problem at all. And now injecting viscoelastic. Look at the slow controlled fill here. That fixation ring is a little vacuum device to hold the eye still. And now for your nucleus removal, again, look at the positioning of the instruments. Looks great. And the end of the case here is IOL insertion. Again, a high degree of precision and control. This is going to be truly amazing. The robots for cataract surgery are going to make our lives better. Think about this. We get better safety, faster reaction time. We can detect things right when they happen within milliseconds. The precision is increased. There is no more tremor or issue of that. It equalizes things. Beginning surgeons can operate just about as well as very advanced surgeons. And finally, it's less stress on us as surgeons. This is better for the patients, better for the surgeons. It's a win across the board. Now, if you want more information, here's a link down below for Horizon Surgical Systems. And my disclosure is I am an advisor to that company. And I think you'll be amazed at what's coming down the pipeline for robotic cataract surgery. It's going to be amazing.